A very familiar text of scripture, Matthew chapter 22. Matthew 22 and St. John 14. Amen? Somebody say amen. 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 You know, it's been a, a message that, uh, that, that I have revisited and it has a different title. About a year or so ago, I preached a message on the fork in the road. And, you know, as I think about oftentimes traveling around the Boston area and all the things that are going on, I realize that life is not only an assignment, but it's a full-time journey. And when you're on this journey, you're going to encounter all kind of things. Ain't that right? We're only given 86,400 seconds each day. And some days we are faced with those seconds and the fork in the road. And sometimes the fork in the road uh, can, can be a change in our life. Uh, sometimes for good and sometimes not so good. But if I were to put a title on today's message, I would, I would title it, The Road of Life. Everybody look to somebody and say, you and I are on the road of life. Now, that might not sound like much at first, but when you stop and think about it, uh, I oftentimes have been doing funerals on a regular basis. And it brings me to the realization uh, and of various ages of various people, uh, how it brings me that some people had long roads and some people had short roads, but they were all on the road of life. And the road of life has been mentioned many, many times throughout the scriptures in terms of just dealing with things as you go through life. But what's important about getting on the road of life is staying on the road of life. And that road I'm referring to is the straight and narrow. Somebody say amen. amen. And so in first uh, Matthew chapter 22, we're going to be starting at verse 1 there. But I just want to, uh, just to build up this message so you'll understand that uh, as we go through life, there are going to be many issues that we have to deal with. Ain't that right? Yes. And there are many roads that we're going to have to deal with. Yes. Amen? Amen? And a lot of times when you're on the road, you, you, go through your, you go through your toes and you sometimes see detours and sometimes you see all kinds of signs of life. That, and I'm talking about everyday walking life. And not just necessarily, it's a metaphor what I'm referring to, not just driving on the super highways and getting on the Jersey turnpipes and uh, going out on mass pipe and going down 95. I'm talking about your life and the life in which God has allotted you to live. And sometimes we're able to live 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years. And God has blessed us to do so. Amen. Amen. And every day you've been given 86,400 seconds in a day. And a lot of times when we deal with this fork in the road, sometimes the fork in the road can be relationships. Relationship between a mother and a father. Between a brother and a sister. Between a family member or a church member. It can be a fork in the road dealing with uh, those on the workplace or dealing with our culture. Uh, there are oftentimes on this road of life, we're going to have to deal with crime and, and sexual desires. We're going to have to deal with bitterness and pornography. We're going to have to deal with decisive moments that will help us. You see, every day you have been given an assignment, and sometimes when you've been given this assignment, there are decisive moments in your life that will shape your life for the rest of your life. Amen. You believe that? Amen. You believe that this morning, and, and you heard me tell you that life, that, that this road that we're on uh, is paved with integrity. And this integrity is forged out of choices that we make every day. Everybody say, a life, life of, integrity of integrity is forged out, forged out every, day every day with choices that we make. Now, I know you can say that's simple, but I'm making it very clear so you'll understand. It's your life uh, choice mindset will cause the end result of where you will wind up. You got family members, I got family members, because they don't always agree with you. Come on, somebody. And they have their own mindset. They wind up in places you ain't going. Somebody say amen. Amen. 
I'm talking to you this morning. I'm going to teach a little bit and then I'm going to preach a little bit because you and I need to be deliberately choose the decision that we're going to make and be committed, Amen. conscious of the decision we make because we always got to remember we're on the straight and the narrow road. We are on life road and on the straight and narrow, you're going to meet all kind of people. Amen. I'll get into that in a minute. And life choices, when, when you make these life choices, remember always make life choices with eternity in view. Always make life choices with eternal life in view. Amen. Somebody look at somebody and say, always make, always make. Life, choices life choices with eternity, with eternity. In, view. in view. You see, you got to value their views. Somebody say amen. You know, you hear people say, what's sadder than a man, a blind man is a man that got two eyes and can't see. <laughs> Ain't that right? You got a lot of people got two eyes, but they can't see nothing. And every time you try to explain it to them, they still can't see nothing. Because they're blinded by their own device. They're blinded by their own way, and they can't see through what you're trying to say. Somebody say, talk to me now. Amen. So you see, we got one. Plus, we got ambition, and that leads to our aggressiveness to walk on this road. God has blessed you and kept you, haven't he? Yes. You know, you can't take both roads at the same time. Look at somebody and say, you can't walk both roads at the same time. You can't walk the highway of holiness. Come on, somebody. And walk the low road of uh, dispensation of this life and try to do what you want to do and think it's pleasing to God. Yeah. Oh, you might not want to hear that kind of preaching. Yeah. You can't take both roles at the same time. You can't love God and man at the same time. You can hold the one and despise the other. Come on, somebody. And I advise you to hold on to the Lord and despise money even though you need it. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't with me this morning. <laughs> What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you, you need money. God knows you need money. That's why he told the preacher. Say, wisdom has power and money has power. But only wisdom can give you life. Solomon telling you and I every day that we can utilize this world while we're in it. Jesus went as far as to say, said the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. Now, why would Jesus, as holy as he is, would tell you and me something? Because he realized while you're here, you need all the resources that this world has to offer. And these resources belong to you, and they belong to me. How do I know this? Because the Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And if this earth belongs to the Lord, then whatever God got for us, you're going to get it. Somebody say amen. amen. See, on this road of life, yes. you're going to meet trouble. Yes. You're going to meet false prophets. Yes. You're going to meet terror. Yes. You're going to meet sorrow. Yes. You're going to meet those that swear at you. Yes. Come on, somebody. You're going to meet those that are slackers. Those that will try to set up a snare on this road of life. You're going to meet all kinds of strangers. People that try to draw you in. You're going to have all kind of tribulation on this road of life. And that will be time to time. You will get thirsty. But as long as you thirst and hunger after righteousness. Amen. And on this road of life, you will get tired. Amen. Look at somebody that says, sometime I'm so tired. Oh, my Lord. But thank God that he can replenish your strength. Thank God he can renew your strength. Many times on this road of life, you will find that you will be warned. And you will be weary. And there will be swords and pestilence in the land on this road of life. And many times on this road of life, there's going to be some misunderstanding. Somebody said, please don't misunderstand me. Look around at somebody and mean it from your heart and say, please don't misunderstand me. You see, one of the biggest issues we have in life is that sometimes people don't always understand where we're coming from. We can have good intentions. Come on, somebody. We have me, a good heart, and me, where but sometimes it's a misunderstanding. Oh, my Lord. Here in chapter 22 of St. Matthew, if you got to say amen. amen. Jesus answered and spake unto them again by a parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king 
Everybody says, a certain king. A certain king. Was made a marriage for his son. We're planning uh, to put a party, uh, a wedding uh, together for his son. And verse 3 says, and he sent for the servants that worked for him, I uh, was under his authority to call them that were bidden to come to the wedding. They were invited to come, and they would not come. Now, you got to have a real good reason not, not to go to a wedding. And Jesus is talking about a wedding both physically and spiritually. In verse 4, he says, and again he sent for other servants, saying, tell them which are bidden. He didn't say unforbidden, he said bidden, because that's the terminology they used in that day. They've been invited to my son's wedding. You and I have been invited to the wedding feast of Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. You have to thank God you've been invited. Amen. Look at somebody say, you have to thank God amen. you have been invited amen. to Jesus' wedding. Jesus wedding. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. I got all the food together. The ox is ready. The fattening is ready. They've been killed and all the things that are ready come into the marriage. All you got to do is just bring yourself in an empty stomach. Amen. But they made light of it. Some people, when you're on the road of life, is going to make light of the walk that you have in Christ. Amen. But I'm here to tell you today, don't take what you got for granted. Amen. Don't take your holiness for granted. Amen. While you're on this highway of holiness, while you're on this straight and narrow, don't take your salvation that you are me on this road for granted. Amen. Somebody needs this this morning. Amen. Verse 5 said, but they made light of it. They, they toyed and played with it like it's a game. Uh, uh, they've been at toys of us. They made light of it, and, and, when and when then they went their ways, one to his farm, another to his business of merchandise, and, they, and the remnant took the servant and intrigued him, right, them spitefully, and then they got so upset in the fact that they were asked, they slew him. My, my, my. But when the king heard thereof, when God himself heard how they had slew the servants, that he sent to invite those that need to come, but when the king heard, he was wroth. He was so angry. And if I were you, I wouldn't make God angry. Look at somebody. Look around at him and open your eyes wide and say, if I were you, I wouldn't make God angry. I, I, I think the Bible said when God gets angry and he breathes out and when he exhales, he calls thunder and lightning. My Lord, I, I, don't, I wouldn't want him upset, amen, because, you know, he might, he'll tell up everything. We don't want him to do that, amen. But when the king heard it, thereof he arose, and he sent forth his armies. Verse 7 said, his armies, and they destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Then said he to his servant, the wedding is ready. Come on, somebody. All them the naysayers and murders and cutthroats and liars and thieves that you will meet on this road of life, they've been dealt with because I sent my angels to deal with them. I sent my army to deal with them. Then verse 8 said, Then said he to his servant, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. You ought to throw up your hands and say, Lord, I thank you for making me worthy. You're on the right road now. You're on the right way now. You're on the right path now. Let me pause there for a moment so you'll understand where I'm coming from. There are all kinds of roads that will lead people to hell. You heard me talk about them before, and I'm going to talk about them again. There's the Atheist Alley. Those that are all the way down the alleyway in all kind of stuff, digging up and bringing up all kind of mess. 
Then you have the legalistic lane. And then you have the morality. You got a lot of people that are full of morality, but they're on the midway. These are all roads and streets that I'm talking about. Then you have those that have a self-righteous street. They always got to be right all the time. Nobody can tell them nothing. They ain't trying to hear nothing. You got those on Reformation Road. They're always trying to reform things, and the more they reform it, the more they're messing up. Come on, somebody. You got those that are real on what they call ritualistic ramp. They just pull off the ramp for a little while and go through the ritual of what the church had to present. But as soon as they leave the church, they're right back to the same old thing. Then you got those that are, that are in the body of Christ and, and those that are around in churches everywhere on what they call delusion drive. Are y'all with me on this? They're delusionists. Come on, somebody. They think the whole thing about the church evolves around them, but they're in a delusion because the last time I checked, it was all about Christ. The last time I looked at it, it was all about Christ and him being crucified. Then you have those, and there's a church, I can't call it by name, but there's a church that's only educated people gone. They're called Modern Thought Boulevard. Come on, somebody. Uh, this is the New Age movement, and we do it this way. Come on, somebody. And they have allowed their education to interfere with their learning. Come on, somebody. Look at somebody and say, no, never, never. allow your education to interfere with your learning. You see, learning, learning is the highest skill you can attain. Amen. Look at somebody say, learning is the highest skill you can obtain. That's why you got to always be learning and keeping your mind open to learning new things. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, you got those on temperance trail. Long as I just treat people right and keep my temper or my hot temper in check, I'll be all right. But all these pathways leads to hell and destruction. Then you got those that are doing anything they want to do and tell you in a minute, God can give me a second chance because I'm on second chance speedway. I just fly right by the church. Come on, somebody. And I'll go there when I want to be there. And don't nobody call me and tell me to come. Never mind. Then you got those that are sitting up. Come on, somebody. They get more important than everybody else, and they're sitting on God's word and God's anointing, procrastination, and that's why I call it Procrastination Parkway. Look at somebody and say, I hope you ain't procrastinating. The worst type of person is an aristocrat who are pro... Who <laughs> Aristocrat who procrastinate. Come on, somebody. Then there's a lot of streets that are named after these next two. You know them, I know them. We got them in our family. We got them around the neighborhood. They'll tell you anything they want you to know. And there's a street named after them. One of the streets is called One Way and Dead End. One way, my way or the highway. You can't do it my way, then hit the highway, brother. Hit the highway, sister, because we're going to do it this way. You give it to them, and when you give it to them and say, can you make something out of it, they can't even figure nothing out. Amen. What are you saying? These are all dead in the street. One road leads to heaven, it's the king's highway. You own the road of life, which is a straight and narrow road. Don't let nobody fool you. This world that we all is paved with integrity. And remember, you got to keep in view that eternal life is always going to be in your rear view and straight ahead. Come on, somebody. But you got another road that, that uh, there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. And that road is paved with good intention. Lord, have mercy. Look to somebody that says good intentions, good intentions. Versus, integrity. versus integrity. You see, over in verse 9, he said, Go ye therefore. Are y'all with me on 22 and 9? Amen. Go ye therefore. Says the wedding is ready, and those that didn't want to come ain't coming because my army of angels took care of them. Go ye therefore into the highway. Highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them 
I'm going to tell them, you don't need to pay no money. You don't need to put nothing down. You just come on because this bread has been set up and the marriage is ready for all eternity. Amen. It's going to be the biggest wedding you've ever been to. The biggest party you ever attended. So those servants went out. These other servants went out into the highways, went out into the byways, the alleyways, the parkways, the streets and the roads. They went everywhere looking for God's people. Somebody say amen. amen. So thy servant went out, in verse 10, into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. Both those were bad. Come on, somebody. And the good. Come on, somebody. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Come on, somebody. It don't matter what you look like as long as you got salvation. It don't matter what people think about as long as you got salvation. People are going to want to think about you what they want to think. But as long as you're holding on and staying on the road of life and keep salvation in perspective. Then, he says, as many bad good that the wedding was furnished with all kinds of guests. Now notice Jesus said good and bad. Come on, somebody. That's for them to talk about the church. Say there's too many hypocrites in the church. Too many people are playing church. I tell them to come on and be one more hypocrite. Come on anyhow, amen? amen. We just going to keep preaching that, and sooner or later, it's going to dawn on you what life you got to live, amen. and what walk you got to walk, and what talk you got to talk, and what songs you got to sing, and what praise you got to pray, and you'll find out sooner or later who is a true and living God. Amen. And when the king came in, when the God of all the universe came in and see all these guesses, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. In other words, that all everybody was invited was given a garment. Come on, somebody. But there'll be those that think they can show up. Come on, somebody. And come any kind of way. But when God calls you, God got a way of cleaning you up. God got a way of sanctifying you. God got a way of making you holy. God got a way of making you just and right in his eyesight. So when you come in, you'll be prepared with a new garment on. Somebody say amen. amen. You just can't go and show up any kind of way. Look at somebody. Somebody invites you to something. Come on, somebody. You just can't come right off the basketball court and go right into a wedding with your shorts and T-shirt on. Come on, somebody. Because somebody's going to say something ain't right with him. He ain't wrapped too tight. His elevator don't go all the way up the shaft. He's a few bricks from being a full turn. And y'all listen to me. The lights are on, but ain't nobody home. A lot of women, you know, always look at somebody and figure out something ain't right with them. If they show up, come on, somebody. I show up one Sunday morning with nothing but a T-shirt and some shorts on and some flip-flop. Y'all, the first thing you're going to say... Don't y'all look at me like that. You're already looking at me strange anyway. But if I come in here and show you my skinny legs, come on, somebody. I know I'm going to be the talk of Roxbury. That might even hit the banner. Come on, somebody. The guy didn't tell me, but he's out here with his little camera. Never mind, never mind. Never worry. Wherever you go, you got to present yourself. Look at somebody and say, wherever you go, you got to present and represent. Wait a minute. Let me give me a moment here. And when the king came in, he was so happy. But he noticed this guy didn't have on him. And the king said to the guests, he saw that man, and we was not in the wedding garment. And verse 12 says, he said unto him, friend. He was nice to him. He said, friend, friend, how can thou in hither and have not a wedding garment? And the man realized that he got past everybody. And he came in and sat down, and God was the one that was presenting all the wedding garments. He furnished all the food. In other words, all you got to do is stay on the holy road of holiness. 
the holy road and the holy highway of holiness. You see, the angels and the servants came out to get you, and when they came out, they witnessed to you, and they talked to you. You got saved and got converted, and now you're being washed by the word. You're getting on a new garment now. Now, how can you sit up here knowing that God provided for you, and you won't accept it? And the Bible said he was speechless. My, my, my. Then said the king unto the servant, bind him, hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. My, my, my. I think about when you're on this road of life, you're going to meet all kind of violence. You're going to meet unholy and ungodly people that's going to try to pull you off this road of righteousness. You're going to meet all kind of people that are unfaithful and ungrateful. Are y'all with me right now? You're going to encounter war among your family members that's going to try to draw you in all kind of situation. And you are not to have nothing to do with that man because if your name ain't in it, don't be bothered with it. Come on, somebody. Be going on the road of life. You're going to deal with those that will be weeping. And you're going to deal with those that will be burdened with wrath that were meant for somebody else, but they want to take it out on you. You're going to meet on this road of life all kind of wickedness. But I'm going to tell you, on this road of life, you're going to run into a whole lot of yesterday that's going to try to mess up your tomorrows. Mm. On this road of life, there's going to be heartaches and headaches. You're going to meet all kinds of strangers in all kinds of seasons. There will be those that will resist you because you're doing right. You're going to run into those on this road that's full of religion and won't accept Christ. You're going to hear a pothole every now and then. But because you hit a pothole, don't mean you're going to be stuck in that hole. Because I'm here to tell you, you got to keep it moving. Look at somebody and say, whatever you do on this road of life, keep it moving. You might not want to come hear this message this morning. This is a message that's going to dig into your soul. Because on this road of life, you're going to have to deal with people you encounter with when it comes down to rejection. And you're going to meet people on this road that's going to be prosperous and try to put you down because you don't have what they got. But you got something they ain't got. And you got eternal life. You got blessing that comes from on high and you to give God the praise and give God the glory. On this road of life, you're going to meet people that are making promises and showing forth disappointment. I'm telling you, you're going to meet people on this road of life that's going to be full of nothing but jealousy. Somebody says, look around and somebody said, just as green as jealousy. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are jealous in the church. Come on, somebody. Look around at somebody and say, I hope you ain't jealous. Because jealousy is a spirit. You see, and this spirit here will ruin you and ruin you. It'll have you wanting everything everybody got. Come on, somebody. You, you know, it's one thing if somebody gets something new. Come on, somebody. Ain't no use to being jealous. You can have the same thing. Come on, somebody. The same God that blessed them can bless you. The same God that gave them that can give you that. But all you got to do is stay on this road of life, which is the road of holiness, which is the straight and narrow. Ask what you will. Ask what you will. God said, prove me. And see, don't I open up the windows of heaven. Now, what I love about that passage of scripture, it said, open up the window, but all my life, I've been trying to figure out how can I open up the door? It says, open up the windows of heaven and see when God pulls you out of blessing that you will not be able to contain. Amen. 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 
Look at somebody and say, God been blessing you real good. You see, on this road, you're going to meet lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs> you're going to be meeting all kinds of serpents. And I ain't talking about the one that just sitting on the ground, but I'm talking about them two-legged serpents, them two-legged lions, them two-legged tigers, them two-legged bears, them two-legged cheetahs. And every now and then, you'll run into a two-legged alligator that just want to take your whole head off. Are y'all with me? And they don't care. And the minute they bite you, they just want to turn and turn and mess you up for the rest of your life. So you don't want to come back from that. Yes. Somebody said, you got to be careful who you meet on this road of life. Then Jesus said, blow us away that leads to destruction. And there be many that go there in that, but narrow. And every now and then, you'll meet a born-again believer. Somebody that trusts the Lord with all their heart and not worry about what others may think. Not worry about what others may do. But keep your mind on Christ. Hmm. Wait a minute, Pastor. What message did you have? The message is very clear. That when I think about all the different people in the Bible, when I think about the rich man and Lazarus, he could have got on the right road. The rich man had it all. Everything that his world had to offer. And the rich man there, he probably had the latest horses and the latest chariot. The Bible said he would dress in royal prayer every day. But he knew that when Lazarus was at his gate, he wouldn't even send him out a plate of food. Now, wait a minute. He knew who Lazarus was. Because when Lazarus died, we're taking the Abraham bosom. The Bible said not many days after the rich man died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. And the Bible tells us he asked Father Abraham. Now that blew my mind because when Jesus was telling us this great parable in the scripture, he recognized Abraham and Lazarus. That means he was full of all his faculties. He had eyes to see, ears to hear. He had a, a smell, a taste, and he knew he was tormented. He had an opportunity, though he was on the wrong road, to get on the right road if he did right by Lazarus. Amen. Don't let your heart be troubled. Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe in me also. For in my Father's house, Oh, many mansions. And if it was not so, I would have never told you. Why would Jesus tell you something if it wasn't true? Amen. Look at somebody and say, why? Amen. Why would Jesus tell you something if it was not true? Amen. Look around at somebody and ask them the question. Why would Jesus? Look around and say, excuse me. Why would Jesus tell you something if it was not true? You see, there comes a time in everybody's life, you get a certain age, you stop holding back, and you just start telling people what's on your mind. Oh, sometimes. I ain't saying that two ounces of fat or muscle between your two lips can't get you in trouble, but I found out one thing through the scripture, that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. That means that two ounces of flesh that's hanging between your two lips has a lot of authority. You don't have to say amen. I know it can cause you to get a promotion or mess around and get you fired. Come on, somebody. I'm telling those who are working right now, keep on working until you can retire. I said keep on working until you can retire. Come on, somebody. Because ain't nothing like getting your 40 acres and your one new. I know they promised us two, but I'll take that one and that 40 acres. I'm getting my retirement, and I'm appreciating what I get. Come on, somebody. And ain't got to worry about all this other stuff no more. Getting paid without the aggravation. Never mind, never mind. I'm sorry, I went there because, you know, sometimes some of y'all say, I can't wait to retire. But make sure you're ready when you retire. 
And make sure you in, involve God in your retirement. Are y'all with me on this? Because God will reveal to you when it's time to go. Come on, somebody. Don't let nobody put no pressure on you to tell you you need to retire, you need to leave. Come on, somebody. You get bold and bodacious. Come on, somebody. Did I say bodacious? Yeah, I did say bodacious. You get bold and bodacious and say, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't got to do nothing but be black and die. Then they really going to mess them up then. Y'all already know where I'm going with this. I'm talking about staying on the road of eternal life. I'm talking about continuing to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you are my disciple if you continue in my word. You are my disciple if you continue in my word. I can't say it enough. You got to continue in his word. It doesn't matter how many times you read this from uh, Genesis to Revelation, continue in God's word. Amen. Wait a minute. The thief on the cross, one was on one side and one was on the other. Malefactors or criminals. And Jesus was in the middle. Now, why they put it in the middle, only God can set that up. Oh, y'all ain't with me now. I mean, they could have put him on one side or the other. But I'm going to tell you, Jesus want to be the centerpiece of your life. He want to be right in the middle of your life. He want to be able to separate anything to the left or to the right. And they put him right down in the middle. And you know the story about heart. One thief railed on him. If you be the son of God, notice he said, if you be the son of God, it was the last opportunity that Satan could use somebody that was on their way to hell to use Jesus to defeat himself. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying this demon that possessed this man told Jesus, if you be the son of God. <laughs> Didn't he say so? Three times in Matthew, the fourth chapter, if you be the son of God, do this. If you be the son of God, do that. If you be the son of God, do this. Now when Jesus was in his final hour of dying, that demon on that man made an accusation if you be the son of God. If you be the son of God, you have to know who you are. Come on, somebody. Ain't nobody got to tell me I'm my father's son. I was there the moment of conception. I was a conception. And when God allowed me to come through my mother's womb, all you got to do is look at my father, and you're looking at me. And when you're looking at my, me, you're looking right at my daddy. Whether you want to look like your daddy, your mom, or not. You stuck with that situation. You, one thing about life, you can't choose. You can't choose your mama. And you can't choose your daddy. Come on, somebody. Oh, you were there at the scene of the crime. I mean, at the scene of love. Because some people had children out of love, and some of them had them because it happened. Uh -huh. On this road, you can get easily turned around. Come on, somebody. Sometimes when you're on a road, you'll see signs that say detour. That don't mean they're trying to lead you astray. That means ahead, there's some type of, of, of a rock being done or some type of blockage. And you should have enough common sense that when you see this detour, you take the detour. Because if you go through that sign, You can cut your life short because you don't know what's on the other side of that detour sign. Many times on this road of life, God will send you oracles and send you signs that are in the time to warn you to be careful. This thief on the cross read on Jesus, if you be the son of God, get down and get us down also. Can you imagine if Jesus would let, listen to that spirit and got down just to prove something to him? What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you you're on the road of holiness. 
You're on the road of righteousness, and you ain't got to prove nothing to the devil. You ain't got to prove nothing to no spirit that's going to work contrary to the word of God. Now think about this one moment. If the devil always telling you to do negative and bad things, how come God can't speak good things? God is talking to you all the time. He's revealing to you all the time. He's giving you attention all the time. I'm giving you what God gave me. No other feast that leave me belong. I know why I'm hanging here. Come on, somebody. You, you know why you're in the position you're in. Come on, somebody. Because if you don't change your ways, come on, somebody. You're going to be stuck in the mud, come on, somebody, and crying for help. And God said, I sent you some help, but you didn't want it. I invited you to the wedding feast, but you didn't come. I gave you a new garment, but you folded it away. You might not want to hear this kind of. This is, this is what they call gut bucket preaching. Come on, somebody. Get all down into your spirit. Come on, somebody. Then make you stop and think, hmm, I should have zigged when I zagged. I should have went to the right, but I must have gone to the left. I know I was on the road of holiness, but somebody distracted me, and I read off. Come on, somebody. If you're, if you're with me, anytime you're driving down the road, there's a side of the road that's been riveted. Come on, somebody. That when your tires hit it, it's a blue. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody. Sometimes when you read off in this highway of holiness, the Holy Ghost will say blue. It'll try to get your attention and bring you back. Come on, somebody. Because time to time, you drip off. Amen. But you have to thank God for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You have to thank God for the Holy Ghost. So if he said, leave me alone, I know why I'm up here. And I know why you up here. Come on, somebody. Somewhere along in this man's life, on this road that he was traveling, he intersected. Come on, somebody. From a road of delusion to the highway of holiness. Come on, somebody. You ever been on a road and got lost and realized? Come on, somebody. Your GPS was telling you everything. Make a left here. Make a left there. Make a left here. Make a left there. And you keep going in a circle. Then you got to use a little common sense and say, I've been this way before. Let me make another turn. And he ran up on the highway of holiness, and along that highway, he met Jesus at the cross. He met Jesus at the cross. Can you imagine that thief that, that, that met with Jesus in paradise, and he got crucified early in the week, or a week before, or a week later? He would have missed out on eternal life. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying today people are so close to the cross and to the throne, and a few words can cause them to miss out. So the thief on the other side lost out. The rich man lost out. And thank God, Paul had to be stopped by the power of God. Y'all yeah, remember Paul persecuting the church. He ain't the type of guy I would be hanging around. If you ever study his life, the, the scripture teaches you through the readings and the doctrine of who this man was, he was a small built man, scrungy looking, but he was super intelligent and he studied under a black man up in Antioch. If you study the man, he wasn't a good looking man to look at, and he had a hawk beard nose. He didn't look like much, but he was smart upstairs. Are y'all with me on this? And don't be misled because many people think, oh, they ain't gonna make no changes, but it took one woman to take prayer out of school. When your mind is made up and 
and you determine to do something, ain't nobody going to stand in your way. What's more powerful than a nuclear warhead, more powerful than a bullet and a gun, is a made-up mind. Look at somebody and say, I wish you make up your mind. Tell them I wish you make up your mind and stay on the highway of holiness. Listen, on this highway, there are going to be all kind of people you're going to encounter, all kind of situations that's going to come up, all kind of things that will pop up. But this man made the right decision. This man made the right decision to serve God. Are y'all with me on this? Time is running out. Things are coming to an end. If you look around, the signs are before you. And all you got to do is take a moment and pause and say, Lord, what way do you want me to go? Which way do you want me to do? What do you want me to turn out to be? Paul found himself in a bad situation where he was killing and destroying the people of God. And it took Jesus. It took Jesus to intercept this man and to stop him in his tracks. Y'all know the story. And you have to thank God for Paul. Because when God saved him, when God delivered him, God said, that's the kind of man I need at my wedding feast. That's the kind of man I want to invite because he's going to fight the good fight of faith. He's going to finish his course. He's going to keep on pressing on. He's not going to let nobody turn him to the left or turn him to the right, but he's going to stay focused on the word of God. Now, I'm just touching bases on all these people because you already know the story if you read the scripture. But there's one I like and there's something about him when God blessed me and you to get the eternal life, I'm going to grab me one of them holy chairs in heaven, pull it up, come on somebody, sit down and say, Zacchaeus, I want to talk to you for a minute. Y'all ain't with me right now. The Bible says Zacchaeus was a very rich man, and he was a tax collector. In fact, when I read the scripture, he's a chief tax collector. But when I was looking at it closer, my eyes played tricks on me, and it said chief thief tax collector. I said, wait a minute. It won't dare, it's just uh, your mind can work with your eyes. But this man was robbing all the law, the children of Israel. And the Bible said that this man, when he heard, because remember now, Jesus is going through the luxurious city of Jericho. Has another man hiding behind the wall of Jericho. And Zacchaeus owned a lot of property, a lot of cattle, a lot of money, and he was taking count for the Roman government, and every time he paid their tribute, whatever was left over for a year, he kept back for himself. Now what I love about this, God knows where you live. Look at somebody and say, God knows exactly where you live. Uh-huh, you think he don't. He knows exactly where you live. In fact, he knows what side of the bed you sleep on. He knows the halves that's in your head. And the Bible tells us that Zacchaeus was a short man of stature, but he was rich. And he heard that Jesus was coming through the land. And when he heard that Jesus was coming through Jericho, he couldn't see over the crowd, so he ran, and you know the story, and climbed up to the sycamore tree. And when he climbed up, he looked over the crowd. And what I love about Jesus in this passage of scripture, the Bible said that Jesus, who knew the land, recognized Zacchaeus and walked right to the bottom of that tree and looked up at him, called him by his name, knowing that he was a chief thief tax collector. He was a publican, 
a turncoat Jew who was cheating his own people. What's that got to do with me? It has a lot to do with you and me. The Bible said that when this man was up there looking, Jesus said, Zacchaeus! Like many of you done clammed up in life. Come on, somebody. And forgot that you're on the road of holiness. This man had everything this world had to offer, but he didn't have salvation. But one day, he met Jesus. And Jesus said, you must come down. I must abide. I must go to your house. Today is your day of salvation. You see, you can meet Jesus if you want him. You can meet him and know him for yourself. Nobody else can tell you about him, but you can meet him and know him for yourself. Pastor, where are you going with this? I'm trying to tell you, get on the road, stay on the road, and don't detour. Follow the signs that's written in the Word, and God has given you a road map. This is a road map for all eternity. Look at somebody say the Bible. It's a road map for all eternity. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area, and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.